All right, team, this is a very simple, easy, basic ventilator video that I'm making with the intention of this being for hospital medicine colleagues and other colleagues who are not used to taking care of patients on mechanical ventilation. By no means is it going to be an all-inclusive, all-thorough, all-encompassing video. It's more of a quick and dirty on how to get the job done. And for this, I'm using the servo ventilator, uh, but a lot of things could be used on the Perrins and Bennett's and the uh, Draegers, et cetera, et cetera. But the first thing I wanna focus your attention to are these four knobs down here, these four buttons, which are the FiO2, the PEEP, the respiratory rate, and the tidal volume. And here I have a sample blood gas assisted right here. So these first two knobs, O2 and PEEP, are what controls the PO2. And then the respiratory rate and the tidal volume are what controls the PCO2, the carbon dioxide level, okay? So if somebody is hypoxic in the ICU, their PO2, the goal you should have is 55 in somebody who has ARDS, okay? You need to go ahead and titrate the FiO2 and the PEEP to control the PO2. Again, your goal here is not 86. Your goal here in somebody who has this virus and ARDS is 55. At least that's what the literature says. So remember when you titrate FiO2, the numbers change pretty quickly. When you, when you titrate PEEP, it happens a little bit more slowly. There will be times in patients who have severe ARDS that the PEEP will hit numbers such as 15, 18, 20, 22, and beyond, okay? Especially in the morbidly obese because we don't really know what PEEP they're receiving inside their lungs. So the FiO2 and the PEEP for another time again is what controls the PO2 and your goal is 55. Then to control your PCO2, which uh, could be a little bit more tricky, this is where you have the respiratory rate and the tidal volume, okay? And the easy way to know what the tidal volume should be for your patient who has ARDS to avoid barotrauma and other complications is a tidal volume of four to six cc's per kilogram of ideal body weight. By no means is that actual body weight, it's ideal body weight. And I have a little calculator on my phone to go ahead and provide me with that information. Okay, so always try to keep the tidal volume as low as you can to have it on the four to, four to six cc's per kilogram of ideal body weight. And then the respiratory rate is what you could go ahead and adjust. And the higher, the, the more you ventilate a patient, the lower your PCO2 is going to be. Now, normal PCO2 is between 35 to 45, okay? In ARDS, you could have something called permissive hypercapnia, which is where you let the PCO2 creep up a little bit, you let the patient develop a bit of a respiratory acidosis with the intention of not driving your airway pressures too high with the tidal volume and the respiratory rate, okay? So I think I just covered these four things right here. In this particular case, these are the settings for this, for this individual. And if you notice right here on these waveforms, you see where it's pink right there? That pink right there means that the patient is breathing over the ventilator. So just keep that in mind. Now, when we come over here to the right-hand column, oh, by the way, this vent setting is PRVC, which is a pretty standard mode that if you just need something simple to get by, this will get the job done for you. Now, here you have your peak pressures. Um, your peak pressures is obviously what the machine uses to drive the flow into the patient. You want to try to keep this under 30, okay? because your peak pressures are always going to be higher 
than your plateau pressures. And your plateau pressures, you wanna keep them under 30 as well in the cases of ARDS. This particular patient obviously has a peak airway pressure of 17, 18. Well, one thing that happens, if you notice, if I turn down the tidal volume, you'll see with time that that peak airway pressure is going to come down unless it really wants to make me look stupid on this video. But nonetheless, um, the respiratory rate that you have the patient set on here is not necessarily what the patient is breathing. As you can see, the patient is triggering his own breaths. So he's breathing 27 times per minute. Because the patient is not paralyzed, he could breathe over the vent if he needs to. Okay, I guess the airway pressures did come down a little bit. Huh, it made me look good. Let me turn it back, because I made my point. And he might not need all this volume, but not an ARDS patient. So here's what the patient's actually breathing, their actual respiratory rate. Here is what the machine is set at, okay? Then you see what the inspiratory time is, which is that TI. And in reality, I push this button right here. You could go ahead and change what the I to E ratio is for the patient. This patient is spontaneously breathing over the vent, so it's not going to be as useful. But you could go ahead and change the inspiratory time. If you need the person to oxygenate some more and ventilate a little bit less, you could increase that inspiratory time. Us physiologically, we usually breathe in one second and exhale. It's basically a one to three ratio where we breathe in the one and we exhale the three. But in certain patients who have ARDS that we need to oxygenate them a little bit more, see like he's set right here at uh, one to three. Um, you may need to increase the eye time so that you could oxygenate the patient more during that ins inspiration time, okay? Don't worry about that number right there. You don't need to touch it. Your RT is gonna be better than you at doing that. That's not basic. Also trigger flow is not something for you to mess with. Okay, so I'm gonna hit cancel right here. So here's your I to E ratio that I was mentioning. And then your minute ventilation inhaled and exhaled right there. Those numbers, generally speaking, should be between five to eight. Okay, that, that lets you know that the patient is uh, is where they need to be with regards to their minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is actually the respiratory rate times the tidal volume, just in case you need to know that equation. Okay, but for the most part, I think this is all you need to know. Let me, let me think about this some more. Because honestly, if you need to go ahead and start using uh, different settings, like I, I, even in my own practice, I rarely use volume control or pressure control, which are the two that are listed here. Um, I use pressure support CPAP when I want to get the patient off the vent and I, you know, ready to extubate the patient. That's the same thing I do for volume support. And I honestly do not touch the SIMV. I don't touch uh, by vent. Well, that's not, uh, I do touch by vent, but that's not a beginner mode. That is an advanced mode that I do not recommend for beginners to tinker with on these patients. And uh, I do not use NAVA. But I think that's uh, pretty much everything you need to know as a, as a beginner on how to manage the, manage the ventilator. And I definitely do recommend you pick up Will Owen's ventilator book, that green book that I recommend pretty often. Um, how you actually touch the ventilator to modify things is like so. Come on. See, you just go ahead and you twist the knob. It's very satisfying. So go ahead and twist the knob. Um, and yeah, I hope this is very helpful for you all. I hope that this helps some people understand ventilators. Again, this is not meant to be uh, everything that you need to know about ventilators to take care of every single patient, but this will help you get by the majority of patients. Um, also, one last thing, you can notice that the patient's air trapping. If, uh, for example, here's the inhalation phase, this is the exhalation phase. If they go ahead and trigger the breath, before it reaches baseline, that line right there, then they're likely breath stacking and they could have auto peep. I guess I could go ahead and mention how to uh, check for, um, how to check for, here we go. 
If you want to go ahead and check a plateau pressure, which is basically where you do an inspiratory hold, you see the button that says here, inspiratory hold. You go ahead and wait till the patient inhales. Oh, I waited too long. Okay. Come on. Is it because the arm is off? It's just making me look bad. All right, there you go. You see the plateau pressure is 14 or so. In patients who have ARDS or severe lung disease from the virus, you want that to be um, you want that to be less than 30. And that's that's a simple ventilator talk, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it.